Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, you guys know the deal. You know what we're here to do, y'all. Y'all know what we're here to do. It's all about the facts on this channel. It's all about the truth, right? It's all about the education, right, guys? You know that. We here to educate. We must continue to educate the lost kids out here. All these lost people who think they know basketball, right? Listening to guys like Nick Wright and Shannon Sharp and Jason Williams and Gilbert Arenas and Kendrick Perkins, like all these clowns, JJ Reddick. These guys do not know basketball. They do not know the history of the basketball, right? They are not, they have no integrity. Right, Because at the end of the day, I've told you guys, it's not about them educating you on the history of the NBA or about basketball in general. It's about the views. It's about the money for these guys. That's all it is. That's why they want you to listen and watch their podcasts right, and things like that. It has nothing to do with integrity or the education of the game. They just want you to listen to them, but they don't have anything to say, these guys. right? And they've been exposed many, many times by many different people. All these guys have been exposed especially someone like a J.J. Redick. He has no integrity. He has no knowledge of the game of basketball. He has no objectivity, right? And he, we don't respect J.J. Redick. He doesn't get any respect from the actual real NBA fans. He does not. Uh, so in this video, guys, we're going to speak about that. We're going to speak about J.J. Redick, LeBron James, and Deion Sanders. And the comments that was made by Deion Sanders, right, the speech that he gave and how it upset guys like J.J. Redick. And then LeBron James co-signs this man, J.J. Redick, because why would he not? That's his boy, right? J.J. Redick is always talking good about LeBron, right? He's paid to talk good about LeBron. So, of course, LeBron is going to back him up, right? So we're talking about it in this video. And I want to thank you guys for all your love, man, for everything, guys. It means a lot to me, man. You guys with the comments, watching my videos. We must continue to educate, right? We must continue to tell the truth and put these guys in perspective, put context behind the lies that these guys are spreading. That's all it is, guys. It's lies. So you guys know what to do, man. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys. You guys have probably seen the videos on YouTube. A lot of people are talking about this right now with this, you know, J.J. Reddick commenting on Deion Sanders, you know, the speech that he gave to the 76ers team, I believe it was. He gave an inspirational speech, a speech, a speech, a talk, right? A little, a little pep talk to these guys. And during the speech that he gave, some things were said about competitiveness, right? about players these days, right? Not having that same competitive fire as the guys that he grew up with, right? The guys in his era, right? Basically the guys I grew up watching. I grew up watching Deion Sanders, guys. So I appreciate what Deion Sanders has to say about the competitiveness of sports, especially as it pertains to basketball. You know, we're not talking about any other sport. We're talking about basketball right now, guys, because basketball has lost all competitive fire, all the competitiveness of the NBA, Right? Most of it's gone out the window. And where's the evidence of this? Well, the evidence is in all these guys playing together. Right? All these guys want to play together now. Right? Damian Lillard and Giannis now. We have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal. And we had LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. And then we had LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love. And then we had Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. And you have all these guys, right? James Harden and Chris Paul. You had Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Then you had the LeBron James Lakers with LeBron James and Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard and Russell Westbrook and Carmelo Anthony and all these guys, right? This is what the NBA has become now. Everybody just teaming up, right? We had the Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, James Harden uh, fiasco, right? That debacle that happened in Brooklyn, that nonsense. This is what we're dealing with now in the NBA, all these guys trying to team up with each other to play with each other. So this is what Coach Deion Sanders is talking about, right? This is what he's talking about. He's talking about the lack of competitiveness in the NBA in sports. And who did that upset? That seemed to upset someone like a J.J. Redick, 
right? And if said J.J. Reddick once again, this man has more comments, more nonsense to talk about, and why would it upset someone like a J.J. Reddick? Well, we must also think about uh, Deion Sanders <laughs> bringing up someone like a Michael Jordan in that speech. That's right, guys. Anytime that Michael Jordan's name is brought up, anytime it's brought up, no matter how appropriate it is, someone like a J.J. Reddick will feel the need to inject his opinion to try to change the narratives, right? Or to try to redirect the attention given to Michael Jordan and put it someplace else, right? And then this is when they tear down Michael Jordan. And J.J. Reddick and guys like LeBron James, they get upset with this stuff because once again, J.J. Reddick, like I said, exposes himself. Anytime Michael Jordan's name is brought up, he must throw his two cents in. And he has no knowledge. I've told you, J.J. Reddick did not grow up watching the 80s and the 90s era NBA. He did not, guys. I told you, he's four years younger than me. So I know he didn't watch it when he was growing up live. And I can tell that he didn't study this stuff. He didn't watch film and actually do his homework on that era because of the things that he says, right? They're nonsensical. And he always gets called out. The reason he's getting called out is because he's always lying. He's always making up stuff that did not happen, right? He's trying to excuse LeBron James all the time and tear down the other errors to lift up LeBron, right? And we all can see right through that nonsense, right? So in this very speech, Deion Sanders brings up Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan's competitiveness, right? And talks about the competitiveness of the guys in that era, of his era, right? Deion Sanders' era and how that they were. They wanted to smoke, he said, all of that stuff. That was what made Michael Jordan who he was, the competitiveness, never backing down, right? Never looking for a shortcut. And that's what Coach Prime was talking about. Guys these days looking for shortcuts, right? I've told you, LeBron James is always trying to put the odds in his favor, right? To make it easier for him. That's not being a true competitor. And J.J. Reddick, he, he proceeded to say something about the locker room and how the locker room is a sacred place. See, this is what they do. They try to change the narratives, right? And they try to make it about something that it's not. This is what these, these guys are experts, professionals at narratives and rewriting history and bending reality. They're experts at this, guys. J.J. Reddick is much better at that nonsense than he was ever at basketball, right? He has no respect for the basketball career, for his basketball acumen. None, none, no respect. No one respects what J.J. Reddick has to say, which is why the only real people who listen to J.J. Reddick, right, who echo his sentiments are who? The LeBron James fan club and LeBron James himself, right? The leader of the fan club, LeBron James, said that J.J. Reddick, right, was speaking facts, right? He backed up J.J. Reddick's comments about the locker room being sacred and that these things shouldn't be coming out. And But meanwhile... The speech was something that Deion Sanders was asked to do. He was asked to come and speak to the team. So that right there makes it not just about, you know, the locker room, right? I don't even believe the speech took place in the locker room. I don't believe it did. I could be wrong on that, but I don't even believe it did. And besides that, how many times, guys, over the years, I'm talking about years, have we heard stories from ex-NBA players, from ex-coaches, training staff, whoever it may be? We've heard stories from behind the scenes, from stuff that happened in locker rooms, from stuff that was said in locker rooms, right? That was said behind the scenes. We've heard sound bites all out the years of NBA, right? We actually find it interesting when we hear sound bites or we hear a story that we never heard before, right? That was only privy to the players or the coaches at that time. We've heard plenty of stories being shared over the years, guys. Plenty of stories that you would have thought maybe were private or they were just sacred to the locker room or the team, right? Guys write books now, right? They got books to write, and they share a lot of stuff that's supposed to be private, right? Scottie Pippen writes a book, right, and proceeds to tear down Michael Jordan and literally lie about this man. No one cares. It wasn't sacred, the things that he was talking about in that book. You guys remember years ago, that guy Sam Smith, a journalist, he wrote that book called The Jordan Rules, it was literally a book about Michael Jordan and the way he was with his teammates, right? How he was treating his teammates, the things that he said to his teammates about his teammates, right? There were conversations in that book that was supposed to be private. That was part of the reason why a lot of guys were upset with some of these guys who were quoted in that book, right? Guys like Horace Grant, 
right? They were upset with some of this stuff that was said because it was supposed to be behind closed doors, it's supposed to be private. But the man wrote a book about it. So we, we must remember, guys, back in the days when we were growing up watching sports, the 80s and the 90s, reporters, that was what they did. They used to try to use any, you know, advantage they had, right? Any kind of connection that they had to receive information from behind the scenes. Things that no one else had access to because they had a connection, right? They knew one of the players, the player would talk to them, and they would get info out of these players. This is what reporters did back in those days. That's why this guy was able to publish that book with a lot of these things and, and quotes and comments from players that they thought were private conversations. So the whole sanctity of the locker room, once again, J.J. Reg is, is a hypocrite. Like with many things that he talks about, it's all hypocrisy. It's all nonsense. Because at the end of the day, all he's trying to do is defend LeBron James and his legacy by crapping on Michael Jordan in his era Right? This is what they must do. I talked about this in the other video, guys, right? They must bring down Michael Jordan in his era to lift LeBron James and these other players. That's the only way they can lift them. Right? They can't lift them on their own resume, right? On the video footage that we have to judge them. They can't lift them off of that. So they lift them by lowering the other guys, right? By bending the narratives, right? Creating these false narratives, bending reality, rewriting history. And for Coach Dion or for Coach Prime, to call Michael Jordan a com true competitor and basically say that the guys in that era were true competitors as composed, uh, compared, compared to now, that upsets someone like a J.J. Redick, right? And J.J. Redick has to say something, and then LeBron James has to back him up because they're all connected. LeBron James pays J.J. Redick to say nice things about LeBron James. So anytime that J.J. Redick comes out, right? I told you, anytime Michael Jordan is brought up, they must throw their two cents in. Guys like J.J. Redick and Draymond Green and Kendrick Perkins and, you know, like all these guys, right? They must throw their two cents in at any given moment when it comes to Michael Jordan and someone's giving Michael Jordan props. That's what's called hate. A lot of times you'll hear LeBron James fans, they like to throw that word hate around. Oh, you guys are hating on LeBron James. Remember, the facts can never be hate. So whenever we're bigging up Michael Jordan or we're praising Michael Jordan and we compare LeBron James and we say that he's not up to that standard and we tell the truth about LeBron James, the team hopping, the flopping around, the crying on the court, the pointing the finger, the standing around on defense, all of this stuff, those are all factual things that we witness watching the film. No one's making that stuff up. That's all true that you can watch on the film. But when J.J. Redick and some of these guys talk about Michael Jordan, right, whenever Michael Jordan's name is brought up, what do they do? Oh, Michael Jordan wasn't that great. His era was weak. The guys he played against wasn't that great. Scottie Pippen was really the main uh, player on that team. Those are all lies. Everything that I just said that they say, those are all lies. Those are not opinions, and that's not what happened in actuality, in reality, right? We all know that Scottie Pippen needed Michael Jordan much more than Michael Jordan needed Scottie Pippen. We all know that. But at the same time, we all understood that Michael Jordan needed Scottie Pippen to win, right? We all understood that. These guys today are trying to make it something that's not. When they tear down Michael Jordan's finals competition, what are they really doing? They're trying to excuse LeBron James' losses, right? I've told you guys this. But they're doing it by spreading lies and, and bending the narrative, right? Changing reality by saying that Michael Jordan's didn't play against anybody when in actuality we know that the 90s was full of all-time great legends all over the NBA all over the NBA at that time guys Michael Jordan was beating really good teams great teams and being all-time great legends keeping all-time greats from winning that's the truth that's the reality of what happened in the 90s but all these years later they'll try to say that none of these guys were great but somehow Scottie Pippen was amazing but Charles Barkley wasn't really that great Carl Malone wasn't that good John Stockton, right, Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal, Alonzo Mourning, Tim Hardaway, Chris Mullen, right? All these guys, they weren't really that great. But Scottie Pippen, he's the only underrated guy of the 90s. You see how that works? That's the hypocrisy. That's how you know they're lying and they're bending the actual reality, guys. They're trying to rewrite history. How can Scottie Pippen be this great? He's so great. But all the other guys that Michael Jordan was going against were not great. Right? Only someone like a J.J. Reck and Nick Wright or Shannon Sharp can make this make sense in their minds. So when we hear J.J. Reddick and LeBron James, you know, co-sign each other, 
basically defending each other against what Coach Prime is speaking about, it goes to just pure hate. That's all it is. Because Deion Sanders never brought up LeBron James' name, never brought up J.J. Rex's name at all. But who did they bring? Who did he bring up? He brought up Michael Jordan. How dare Deion Sanders bring up the great, the legendary Michael Jordan in a speech to athletes about competitiveness? Who else are you gonna bring up? Michael Jordan is a standard. That's why Kobe Bryant was aiming for Michael Jordan because he knew he was a standard when it comes to competitiveness. To from, from uh, comp uh, com co comes to greatness. It's Michael Jordan, guys. He's the standard. There have been other great competitors in NBA's history, right? No doubt about it. Bill Russell, Larry Bird, Jerry West, Kobe Bryant, right? These guys are great competitors. But Michael Jordan is a standard, right? And Deion Sanders knows that because Deion Sanders was a great competitor himself and he was a great star, a great athlete in that same time period as Michael Jordan, right? Deion Sanders played two sports in the 90s, baseball and football. Deion Sanders is considered by many to be one of the greatest athletes, just athletes in the history of sports. But Deion Sanders did not just talk the talk. Deion Sanders walked the walk. He, his game spoke, right? That's what it was with Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders had the swag, and he had the game to back it up. That's why it's called prime time. The man was special. And he's giving Michael Jordan the props, the respect that he, that he earned, <laughs> that he deserves. He wasn't crapping on anybody else, but he was making a very valid point about the competitiveness in the NBA, the competitiveness of athletes in this era, this generation. These guys are not competitive like that. James Harden, Ben Simmons, those guys are competitors. Kevin Durant, he's not a real competitor, right? These guys are all teaming up. LeBron James, we've, talk, we've talked about this, guys. He's not on, a, on the level of a competitor as those guys that I mentioned, right? The Michael Jordans, the Kobe's, the, the Larry Birds, the Jerry Wests, the Bill Russells. He's not on that level. Is he a competitor? Yeah, he's a competitor. But remember, there's levels to this, and LeBron James is not up there as a competitor. And we have all the footage. We have all the evidence. His career is evidence. It speaks to that, right? Always having to team up with guys, that shows a lack of competitiveness, Right, he's scared. Like Coach Prime said, these guys are scared. Right, they're scared to get exposed because they're always concerned about their brand. That's all they're concerned about is their money, is their brand. So they protect their image on the court, not off the court image. They protect their on the court image, right? More than they do the off the court image. You see these guys off the court, they don't even care what they're doing. But on the court, they'll load manage. They'll duck certain teams, certain opponents, right? That's what Coach Prime was talking about. He was alluding to that, right? Guys want to play with each other, not against each other. They're protecting their on-court image, right? They're all about the numbers now. Nobody wants to play defense. No one takes pride in playing 82 games. No one takes pride in defense. And guys like J.J. Redick, they never call this stuff out. LeBron James hasn't played consistent defense in damn near 10 seasons. No one calls him out. J.J. Redick just keeps talking about how great he is. Greatest player of all time ain't played defense in 10 seasons. Greatest player of all time, but flops around every game, stands still on defense every game, walks up and down the court, points a finger at his teammates, always has his hands up in the air. So, yeah, man, shout out to Coach Prime, man, for speaking the truth, man, for, for giving Michael Jordan his props, for talking about Michael Jordan, the competitor, and how Michael Jordan always wanted that smoke. He knows the deal, and we all know the deal, which is why we hold Michael Jordan to the standard that we do and why Michael Jordan has the respect of guys like Deion Sanders. He's contemporary. Deion Sanders was a contemporary of Michael Jordan. Like I said, he was a big-time athlete at the same time Michael Jordan was a big-time athlete. He didn't grow up watching Michael Jordan. He played when Michael Jordan was playing. He was just, well, not just as big as Michael Jordan in the 90s. I told you guys about this, but... Deion Sanders was up there, man. And right now, Deion Sanders is big time. He's back in the headlines. So shout out to Coach Prime. Shout out to Michael Jordan and his competitiveness. And once again, J.J. Reddick exposed himself and LeBron James backs him up because this is what LeBron James has to do. He must continue 
to promote these guys that promote him. Right? But we don't respect it. And we see right through that nonsense, guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one.